Welcome everybody to Our Green Acres. If you are new to my channel, my name is Teresa. In today's video, I'm going to show y'all some new spring decor that I have added to my home. I'm also going to do some thrift flips for you and I've also got some projects that will be free. They're going to be trash to treasures. Also, I hope you'll stay to the end because I want to share with y'all a new hobby that I have taken up and I want to share it with you. I hope y'all enjoy the video and get lots of inspiration and ideas for your home. Hey y'all, let's get started. The first project is going to be a thrift store flip. I got this little sign at Goodwill and I paid $3.99 for it. I love the little rustic, little faux um, palette wood look to it and I think this is going to flip and we can make a great little spring decor piece out of this. I'm going to go over it with my candle wax. Y'all know I use this method so when I go to paint, it lifts my paint off easy when I go to distress. Now I'm going to take a new Iron Orchid Design Transfer book that I have and I'll have it linked down below and I'm going to put this really pretty flower on here. I painted this with country sheet paint in the color crinoline and I will link it down below. Now to apply your transfer you always want to tape it on with some painters tape and then you want to remove the, the little white backing and just go over it with a little scraper tool until you have the whole decal transferred onto your base. Now if you lift up and you have a piece that didn't adhere to your base just put your paper back down and go back over it. Now, I thought this this flower right here is beautiful, and I love the colors in it. I think this just screams spring. Now, I went over the side with it because it all didn't fit on the front, and I love that little t detail when it goes over the side. Now, I'm going to add this little um, French writing, and it is on the same sheet as the floral that I just used in this same book. Now, I'm just going to go over it with the same method, and just always go back over it with your transparent paper, and that just makes it adhere um, really well. Now, I'm just going to go through those little divots of that palette just to give it more of that distressed look, and just kind of um, work that transfer down into those little indentions, and that is how easy that was. So, for $3.99 now, we've got a great little piece for our spring decor. The clock is ticking. I don't know what I should do, and I wish you would be right here with me. My mind is filled with pictures of when we used to dance, but... Now I'm going to show you some pots. Now I scored all these at Goodwill. I've been getting a lot of pots here lately at the thrift store. The first one on the left is just random. It was $1.99, but that day red tag was half off. So I basically paid around a dollar for each of these. So these two right here, one is, you know, of course the brown and the other one on the right is kind of more of a, a sandstone, a light color, and I love that color. I always love terracotta pots. I've got a large one and more of a medium size. You can get terracotta pots a lot of times at Dollar Tree if you look up on them. The one on the left I had in my yard, so it's free. This one right here, of course, it was $1.99 at Goodwill. Just random of the prices they put on these little pots. You don't know if they're 99 cents or if they're $1.99. Now I'm going to take my favorite Iron Orchid Design transfer book and its traditional pots. And these transfers are basically, they're kind of designed to go on pots like this. So I thought, why not? I've looked up on all these little pots at Goodwill. I'm going to get out my transfers because right now I really enjoy uh, tr putting transfers on things. It's so easy to do and it adds such a beautiful detail. So the, the, this book has a sheet of white uh, decals and the white just really pops on this terracotta. So I want to show you also what the black looks like on terracotta. And it also looks really well because once you get these little pieces done, of course, you can spray these with a, uh, you know, a clear sealer and put these outside or you can put these around your home for spring. And this right here just screams French country to me. I love these. So th this right here is such a fun project. So this little sandstone one, I thought the little bee was a good one. Now this one come out of the brocant transfer book and it's another great transfer book if you're looking for one that's got a lot of shabby chic French country type decals in it and it's also got some farmhouse too and so I took that little bee just to give you different options and different colors that you can put on your pots and this little smooth pot I also got it at a thrift store and I paid I think 99 cents for it 
So just giving y'all some ideas of, you know, if you, when you see pots at yard sales or you have them in your yard or, you know, at the thrift stores, pick them up, bring them home and put you some transfers on them. Now, of course, if you don't have transfers, you could always put a mold on them. You could put stamps on them. You could also put stencils on your pots. But just to kind of dress them up a little bit, and then I'm going to show you how I style them in just a minute. But I also want to show you some other things that I scored at Goodwill the other day. I scored these really pretty wooden kitchen utensils. These, a lot of these are the KitchenAid brand. So I got this whole bundle right here for $3.99. And I love wooden utensils. So anytime I see these out, I buy them. This little paddle on the left, it was $0.99. Cents, and then the other little smaller wooden utensils, they were $0.99. Cents. And I thought, what great little display um, you know, items that now that I have, and, and they fit so cute in these little pots. So now I'm just going to give you some ideas of how you can style your pots once you get them made. I miss you so bad, won't you come back to me? I've got you in my head, you're all that I see. I've lost all my chances, I know that I am too late. I'm thinking of you, I'm thinking of you. Thinking of you Wondering if you're thinking about me too Now it's too late Now it's too late I'm out of time But I'm still Thinking of you The next project I'm going to show y'all some vintage clocks that I got at a yard sale during the summer and I got uh, this whole bin of clocks for two dollars. They're in pretty rough shape but I took them inside. I cleaned them up so I'm going to show y'all some different ways that you can style these clocks in your home and how beautiful they look. Now I'm going to show you another really fun project, and this is free. This is just going to be from discarded cans. Any kind of can you have, like vegetables or fruit, save them, wash them. And I'm going to show you, all we do is we're going to basically take the labels off of them. You want to get a can opener, and you want to cut the top and the bottom off. And of course, the top will already be off if you use the, the contents in the can. But basically, we just want it hollow, and then all we're going to do is we're going to smash the bottom of the can until it's flat. I want to show you here, this one was really easy to do. Just always be careful if you're working with sharp edges. And then we take it outside with a little rubber mallet and we flatten it down. Now, I got this idea to do these little cans from my friend Jackie over at Ruth and Ruby. She has a store where she sells a lot of the Iron Orchid design uh, and Jamie Ray Vintage um, products, but she also has a YouTube channel. And she has just cranked her YouTube channel back up. So she did a video last week on how to make these cute cans. I'm going to link her, her video down below because she gives you a lot more different ideas of how to do the cans. But she's the one that inspired me. So basically we pounded down the bottoms of all the cans flat. And then I'm just going to now, I'm going to embellish them. You know, you can embellish these little cans after you get them made any way you want to. I, I spray painted them white. Because I, we looked up and had some nice weather here in Alabama this week. And I know a lot of people are undergoing some really bad snowstorms. But we had some nice weather here. So I got outside and I put a coat of spray paint on my cans. And now I'm just making molds to go on mine. So I'm taking my my air dry clay and you, I've got some iron orchid design clay and I've also got this that I have linked in my Amazon store but you can use whatever kind of air dry clay that you have this one I'm just going to take it you warm it up in your hands I'm using my little my little iron orchid design brayer and I'm just rolling it out you could also use a little rolling pin and I'm taking a crock stamp that I have and I'm just going to adhere it down into that clay to make a mold and that way, the, the image of the stamp will go down into that clay. Now, I'm just going to take my little plastic scraper tool, and I'm going to go around it, and I'm just going to kind of trim off the edges of the clay around my stamp and just kind of go around with the, 
with the shape and the design of my stamp. And once I get that ex excess clay, you know, trimmed off, then I'm going to hear all my little um, clay embellishments onto my cans using some Elmer's wood glue. Now, you can also, you know, whatever kind of wood glue you have, but I think wood glue, to me, works the best when it's here in these little um, clay molds. Now, you just very gently just go around and just kind of work it down onto your, um, to your base. And you always want to adhere your clay molds to your base before they dry. When they're wet is when you want to put it on your base because that way they will shape and form to, to, the, to the base you're putting them on. And this one I think is really cute. And I'll link all the molds that I used today down in my description box. But I just used some that I already had. And this is a little famous rabbit. I love this rabbit. He's been used so much on so many, so many projects. But who doesn't love rabbits? And especially now with Easter around the corner. So you use your cornstarch, of course, before you put your clay in. And that just helps that clay image come out of your mold a lot easier and then I just put him on on my can and then I'm going to go over them all once my clay dries and I'm going to go over them with some chalk paint and just give them one more last layer just to make them all look cohesive and like they are all built together and now you, know, you can add wire to your little cans and my friend Jackie in her video she did that and she also sells some little rustic wire in her store now I'm just going to hot glue some little ribbon on the sides of mine but there's so many ways that you can add little handles to these in so many ways now you can embellish them and put whatever you want in them and I know for Easter it would be so fun put some little um, some little Easter grass in it put some little Easter eggs you know just the sky's the limit now on this of all the ways that you can embellish them and all the you know things that you can hang these on Now the next project, I am going to um, transform a frame that I've had for many years. I've probably had this frame over 15 years. It had glass in it. It had a picture. I actually bought this, you know, and had a um, print framed in it professionally at a frame store. So this is a high price frame right here. But I've kept it over the years. I've, we've taken the glass out of it. I no longer want it because it's so heavy with the glass because it's a huge frame. But I chalk painted it. And went over it. Um, I'm going to go over it with some baby wipes in those little ornate places just to bring out a little bit of that, um, the wood color that it was, just to add some distressing to it because these ornate features on this frame are absolutely gorgeous. But as you can see, it painted up really well. And the chalk paint I used on this was also the Country Chic Crinoline. I love the Crinoline, it's one of my favorite colors in this Country Chic paint. It's, you know, it's kind of a it's not a white white and it's not a cream it, but it's kind of in between so after i took the baby wipe now you can see the distressing that i put on the frame and i didn't distress it a lot but just in some places and we're going to cut the wire off of it because i'm actually going to hang it you know um not horizontal i'm going to i'm going to um, do it the tall way. Now I'm going to take some coffee bean bags that I have. I paid two dollars for these at a local uh, little florist store that we have. And anytime I see coffee coffee bean bags, they're huge. I usually purchase them because you can get a lot of burlap out of them, and they always have these really cool, um, you know, writing on the front of them. And I'm taking some poster board from Dollar Tree, and I've had to. Um, modified a little bit to fit my frame so i just taped an extra piece on and made it to fit inside my frame and i cut my coffee bean bag down to the size of my poster board and i left some edges that it would overlap and i just used some hot glue i went around it and i just um attached it on on all four sides really good and then i put it back in my frame now i've got a really elegant rustic wall decor piece and like i say this piece right here is huge so i know i'm going to enjoy this 
I also want to add this cute little shabby chic French country picture. I've just recently purchased it and it will be in my Amazon store also. Okay, since we got another thrifted frame and we've got another coffee bag, let's just go on and make another one. This is another really beautiful ornate frame. Y'all, I pick these up every time I see them at thrift stores and yard sales. This one was $5. I Actually, I removed, this is a ca framed canvas, so I removed the canvas and it didn't harm it in any way. I took it out of the frame and you can see the beautiful ornate features this frame has. I'm going to go over those features with a candle with the candle wax and I get my candles from Dollar Tree or you can pick candles up just about anywhere but that wax will help lift the paint off when I go to distress it. Now I'm just going to go around a Dollar Tree foam board that I've cut down to go into my frame and I'm just going to go around the sides and the ends of my burlap bag just to make it fit on my foam board really snug and just hot glue it around the edges and once you get it done if you need to trim it up anywhere especially in the corners then go on and do that once I get that done then I'm just going to slip it back into my frame and this made a great very inexpensive piece of large artwork now I paired this with a little white dough bowl that I have got listed in my my Amazon store absolutely love it and the basket was from Target. Okay the next project I'm going to upcycle a little wooden box that I've had for years. One of my sweet neighbors made me this and gave it to me for Christmas one year and I have featured it in several videos. Well I've always told you when you have something that has two sides why not just go on and decorate both sides of it and you can switch it around. So on the other side of this little box I've got some really pretty little eucalyptus cotton stems that I ordered from Amazon. So I wanted to put this Jamie Ray vintage stencil on there. And I'm just going over it with a sanding block and just kind of distressing it a little bit so it'll look like it's worn on the box and not just freshly painted. But I did use um, black chalk paint to stencil this on. So and th these stencils I'll have linked down in my description box below. But I'm just featuring it now with the little eucalyptus and the cotton stems that I ordered from Amazon. And I'm going to have these linked in my store. These come so nicely packaged. They're in a very nice box and they're all individually wrapped. So I think you get six stems. And I know I'm going to love these for spring, summer. You can use these just all year long because these will carry us on into fall too. Okay, the next project is going to be a yard sale find. Now, these are some rubber boots I got at a yard sale, and I paid a dollar for them. Now, they're cute the way they are. Like, if you had an outdoor little patio or, you know, little um, potting area, I think these would be really cute like they are. But I'm going to use these in my home this spring and summer. So, I took them outside on a nice day that we had this week, and I spray painted them. And I used um, a high-gloss um, Rust-Oleum spray paint on these. So, I just stuck some florals down in them. And I'm just going to show you some different ways now you can style little rubber boots. I have featured little rubber boots in, you know, several of my videos of how you can upcycle them and paint them and even put stencils and transfers on them. Now I want to share with y'all a little yard sale um, find that I got for $2. Y'all have always been intrigued with miniatures and doll houses. And throughout my lifetime, I have tried to pursue making little doll houses and doing miniatures as a hobby, but it just never worked out. <laughs> I would get some stuff made, I would move, and then it would get damaged and get lost. So anyway, this was a little $2 find. They actually are selling this on Amazon. I'll have it linked in my store. But if you, know, if you want to purchase it brand new, you can. It comes with accessories um, you know it has two little stairwells it's got little working shutters it's a very cute little dollhouse but this one was two dollars and as you can see mine come with no accessories it don't even have the stairs uh, one of the little shutters is missing but y'all I absolutely love this and also the little roof there the little overhangs those are broke off but you know what that's okay I've been doing some research and this is gonna be a hobby that I'm, I'm gonna want to pursue because I'm doing some research on how you can transform doll houses you can take just about anything make it into a little doll house or a room and decorate it and just have something fun to work on you know a lot of us we may be housebound 
Um, you know, if you're going through a sickness or a struggle and you just need something, sometimes just to focus your mind on something else, this is very relaxing because, um, it, it, you know, being having a little dollhouse hobby is something that you can just work on over time. So as I work on mine and do things to it, I'm going to carry y'all along on this little miniature dollhouse adventure and I will make sure to include things that I do to it and upgrade it in upcoming videos. So if this is something that y'all are interested in please comment below and let me know because I would love to share it with y'all okay y'all we are at the end of the video so if you enjoyed this video please give it a like please subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and as always I appreciate each and every one of y'all for coming over today and watching my video and until the next video I hope y'all have a great weekend and I will see you next Saturday love y'all